Imagine you want to travel from one place to another. If you have a bike, it might take you 15 minutes. But if you have a car, it could take only 5 minutes. For me, learning to build robots was like a bike journey. I always enjoyed coding, but I was specifically interested in programming robots. To do that, I had to first create a robot, which means I had to design circuits, design 3D parts, select compatible components, and then put everything together and fix any issues. Once the robot was built, then I could actually start programming. But this process took a long time and things often broke along the way, which made it take even longer. But what if you could skip all of that and just start coding robots right away? So this video is specifically for those who love programming robots and don't want to spend a lot of time on electronics or hardware design. This is an open source robotic doll from Petoy, a company that had a Kickstarter campaign to create a robot for serious robotics learning. Now looking at its specs, I'm amazed how much this robot can offer as it seems to have something for everyone. You could start from basic programming and go all the way up to advanced systems like ROS, Raspberry Pi and so many others. This robot is even being used in a research studies by some of the big players in the robotics field. This all sounds impressive, but as someone who has worked with advanced robots, I understand the skills that are truly necessary. So I've been putting this robot through different tests for over a month. Now let's see if it's just another toy or if you can genuinely learn any real world robotic skills, which you can use to program the advanced robots. I picked three tests for this robot, which every robotics engineer must know. First, we are going to check if we can learn calibration by fine tuning the robot's movements to ensure the smooth and accurate operation. Second, we'll test how straightforward it is to write and implement the code in this robot. And third, to become a robotics engineer, you need to get hands-on practice of three stages of robotics, which is perception, decision-making, and action. We'll evaluate if this robot offers learners like you and me the opportunity to practice these three stages. And lastly, we'll discuss the drawbacks of the robot and see who is it for, whether it's worth buying it or not. Whether it is Atlas, Spot, Stretch, or any other robot, every single one requires calibration. This is the most crucial step for a robotics engineer to test before you even start using the robot in the real world. And every robotics engineer must know how to do it. So let's see if we can practice that with this robot. But what is calibration? It is a process used to ensure that robot performs smooth, accurate, and coordinated movements. In simpler terms, it is what we need to do to make the robot walk normally. Now this robot has four legs and each leg has two motors and we need to make sure that all the legs are equally leveled. We will use this software where each of the slider can be used to calibrate the robot's default position. Right now, our robot is in a calibration position. If you look at this back leg, which represents the motor 10 and 14 in the software, both positions are at zero and it looks perfectly aligned with our ideal position. Now, if you take a look at the front leg, which represents motor 9 and 13, it also at zero. So logically, it should be perfectly aligned like the back leg we just saw, but it looks a bit forward and which is not what we want. That means we need to adjust it and the rest of the legs are also somewhat not in an ideal position especially this leg is way off its knee joint is working but the arm is not moving at all no matter what value i input it looks like the motor is damaged so we need to probably replace this motor you see all the motors are same they're all set to zero value so logically they should be properly aligned but why some of them are aligned and some of them are not it makes no sense right let me explain when working with servo motors, you usually have a target position or an angle you want a servo to rotate to. In this case, our robot's ideal position should look like this. However, due to factors like mechanical inaccuracies or damages, the actual position the servo wants to rotate might not perfectly align with the target position. For example, if you write a code to move a servo to a position corresponding to a 90 degree, but due to mechanical issues, it actually moves to 95 degrees. That five degree more. So then you would have to set an offset of minus five degrees. This way, when you command the servo motor to move to 90 degree, it will consider the offset, which is minus five and actually move to 85 degree. But it will result in the final position of 90 degree. 
In this way, we adjusted our code to accommodate mechanical issues. You have to find these offsets for every single motor to make the robot stand perfectly in its default state. Otherwise, it will wobble, it will fall down due to imbalance, and that's what calibration is all about. So let's do that. We will use the Petroy desktop app to adjust our motors, and with the help of these sliders, we will try and bring the robot to its ideal position. At the same time, we need to use the L-shape tool as a visual reference during calibration. This process needs to be done very carefully to minimize the human error. And we will follow a specific sequence. First, we'll adjust the shoulder servos for each leg and then the knee servos. Simultaneously, we will use L-shaped tool and the triangle markings on a beetle leg parts, which will serve as a guide to align everything properly. You need to view it from a direct line of sight and align the tuner with the center of the screws in the shoulder and the knee joint as well as the small holes at the tip of the foot. Think of it like hanging a picture frame on the wall. To ensure the frame is leveled and straight, you need to align its edges correctly. If you view the frame from an angle, you know, it's difficult to determine if it's straight. But if you stand like directly in front of a frame, you can see it's properly aligned. It's same as that. Now that's all done. After calibrating, let's save to store the calibration values. If anything went wrong and the robot is still not calibrated, then unfortunately you'll have to start from the beginning. And that's it, our robot is calibrated. Now you can do exactly the same thing through Arduino also via calibration code. This particularly is interesting for my fellow nerds who likes to dive deep. Now you don't have to write a calibration code from scratch because this is an open source project where Petra Robot has all the getting started code pre-written, but you can download the base code from the GitHub repository. Let's open Arduino, select port and board, and then upload the code to calibrate the robot. Once the upload is finished, you need to open a serial monitor. You can type C and press enter. This will set the robot in calibration mode. In here, we'll get two dimensional matrix which you can visualize as a table with the rows and the columns. The matrix has two rows. The first row contains the indices of each joint servo. An index is a unique identifier representing each individual servo in the system. It allows the control software to know which servo motor we are trying to calibrate. For example, Beetle Robot has 15 servos, so the first line of the matrix would have 15 values. The second row contains offset joint angles. These are the angles that are added or subtracted from the ideal position for each point. These are the values we need to modify to adjust for errors or mechanical misalignment and bring the robot to its ideal position. For example, if you want to send a value of minus 3 to motor 8, then you can say C8, minus 3 and enter. And that's it. The new value is set and you can follow the same steps for other motors too. As you can see, there is a simple method and there's a complex method to do the same task. My personal advice when you're learning it, it's beneficial to gain deep understanding about what's happening behind the scenes. For example, when we chose to calibrate the robot using Arduino, we learned how to manipulate a 2D matrix. It is an essential skill in this field and it will take you a long way. So don't try and take shortcuts in this case. Now with calibration complete, our robot can now stand correctly without any irregularities. And now we are ready to move on to do a cool project where we'll program the robot to use its camera and entire body to track a ball. The extra thing we need to add to do this project is a camera and the ball. Now again, you don't have to start coding from scratch. We are using a third party sensor and every sensor comes with a dedicated library. So we need to install that library in Arduino. This library has a bunch of examples, which can be your starting point. Now this robot can be programmed in many languages like C++, Arduino programming language, which is a simplified version of C++ or Python. And these are the exact same languages I use every day as a robotics engineer. So that's a good thing. For this project, we're using Arduino programming. When you are just starting out, one of the most basic thing you can do is to read and understand the existing code. In this case, let's take a look at the code which we just used from an example library. This part of the code sets up a communication with a computer vision sensor in either I2C or a serial mode and sets the sensor's address. In the setup function, the code initializes the sensor and enables the ball detection mode. 
If the initialization fails, the code prints an error message to the serial monitor. In the loop function, the code checks if the ball is detected by the sensor. If so, it prints the ball coordinates, size, and label to the serial monitor. If the ball is not detected, it prints the message indicating no ball was detected. Finally, it calculates and prints the frames per second based on the time elapsed since the start of the loop. Overall, the code reads the data from the computer vision sensor and prints it to the serial monitor, allowing the user to see information about any balls being detected or not. And there you have it, the robot is following the ball. And this is a perfect example of how we can teach robot to gather data from its environment using sensors, which is a perception stage, then make decisions based on that data, which is a decision making stage, and then act on those decisions like moving its head side to side to follow the ball, which is an action stage. In real world applications, the code from robot would be more complex and lengthy. But fundamentally, this is the kind of work you would be doing as a robotics engineer using various sensors. Now with the same sensor, you can program the robot to track different colors, symbols, people, or anything else. And as you get to more like an advanced stage, you can swap the Arduino with the Raspberry Pi. And then you can start using artificial intelligence, which involves training your neural network to teach the robot learn things on their own. And this is exactly what my research is, and I think it's pretty cool. But you have to start with fundamentals. Now, what's my take on it? I think this robot is powerful, and I haven't even pushed its limit yet. But with all the available code and good documentation that comes with it, I think it's a great way to get a good feel about robotics. It's very critical to begin somewhere instead of feeling overwhelmed. So the challenges this robot presents are engaging enough to keep you interested, but not so difficult that they would cause too much of a frustration. So I feel that it strikes a good balance. However, real world robots perform much more complex tasks. So keep it in mind that they require more powerful hardware to run their programs. This means we might need to upgrade from an Arduino to something like NVIDIA device, which can handle more intensive computing tasks such as AI algorithms. If you want to know more about it, then you can watch this video where I demonstrated that. The physical body of the robot will also need to be larger, like the Spot robot. It's way bigger than the Beetle robot, so we'll need a bit sturdier parts to support it. Now to help the robot to understand its surrounding, we might need to add extra devices also, like better resolution cameras or night vision cameras, LiDAR sensors, or you might even design your own sensors when you get to that level. In short, the robot will continue to upgrade based on the necessities, but the fundamentals will always stay the same. And that's what this kit is all about, to get you started on fundamentals. Now, who is it for? Personal story. When I was a beginner, I didn't have any fancy equipment. I had to make everything myself from very scratch. And it took a long time. But I don't have regrets because I wanted to learn every single thing that goes into making a robot. However, some of you may not feel the same way. You might be more interested only in programming a robot because you want to become a robotic software engineer. And that is great too. If that's you, then this robot could be a good starting point for you. It can help you dive into coding very quickly and it is very well documented. You can practice Python, a ROS, which is robotic operating system, C++, control algorithms, and even test like deep reinforcement learning algorithms, which is like a very advanced field of robotics. It is a branch of AI where you can experiment with an idea of teaching robots how to learn on their own. And if you're interested in that, then I would recommend watch this video by Centex. He's using a simulated version of the exactly same robot uh, to kind of experiment with this reinforcement learning algorithms. It's a pretty good video. In short, you can learn a whole range of real world skills with it. So if you choose to buy it, have fun with it. I think it's a pretty good key. And I'll see you guys in the next video.